ladies and gentlemen, Eric Church. All right. How you guys doing? Good? They're going to warm up, Eric. Yeah, I, they're, they're not going to be as quiet as that. They're a little cold, Ricky. Um, Eric, you've, you, you've got the great advantage of already having done a Country to Country show last night. How was it? Yeah. Where were you and how was it? We were, we were in Dublin last night, but, but we're, we're on um, you know, week three of a European tour. You know, we started in um, Stockholm, Sweden. And um, we went through Norway and Germany and, and Amsterdam and, and, and Switzerland. But um, last night was great. I, th I think that um, the interesting thing about country is it's such a big umbrella. Um, uh, I, I somewhat think it's presumptuous when we come over here and, and, and put together a country to country and say, hey, this is country music. It's so broad. Yeah. Um, at least for our night, I mean, if you take my, myself, you take Chris Stapleton, you take Casey Musgraves, um, it's more of the troubadour, singer, songwriter. Um, and I think that um, that's what works and, and that's what's real and what's always been real. So it's, it's exciting to come over here and, and, and play with those guys. And uh, it's also exciting to, it's been great throughout Europe. I mean, not just in the UK, but everywhere else. And later on, we're going to hear from Andrew Combs. And you yeah. know Andrew because he's been out with you in, in Europe as well. He has, yeah. Andrew's great. And... Um, Americana, singer, songwriter, stuff that stuff that I love. I think the I think the heart of country music to me, it beats an Americana. So uh, that Lovely. world right now is a, is a, is, a, is a very exciting world for me. Well, that's great because I mean we we cross all of these things on our show. Um, uh, uh, you're going to play your normal. I guess you're playing your headlining show tonight. So I'm hoping that that means we're going to hear. Lots and lots of songs. <laughs> lots, gonna, yeah. of, lots of new songs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, 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 we've played um, uh, the Mr. Misunderstood album, you know, which came out um, as a surprise to everybody, including myself, <laughs> um, <laughs> in November uh, of this past year uh, in the States. And it came out recently here. But um, we play a few songs off that. And that's been, that's been the best thing is, you know, we're over here. We don't have a lot of shows back in the States for at least the next year. So it's a way to come over here and play some songs that we're not going to play for a, a, quite a while. And Absolutely. It's, it's been fun to do. And it, it is um, Saturday night, Eric, so I'm guessing that one or two people in this audience, one or two, and maybe yourself included later in the evening, may well have a drink in their hand. Yeah, I, I will. <laughs> Shall we just have a little reminder of what that sounds like? <laughs> Church. I have a, I, f I found that no matter where I go, that's a universal theme. No matter what country <laughs> you're in, that, that tends to work. Do you think we might get a longer version of that before the evening's out? Uh, every night for us, I mean, our show's been different um, every night of this tour and every night really? of our last tour. Yeah, we, we, that keeps me, you know, Energized. I just, um, I think, it, it, I think the biggest thing that it, when you, when you go play shows, uh, so many people play the same show every night, and I think there's just that energy that happens when you throw in new songs. And yeah. You see where the crowd is, and you see where you want to go. So, um, I think there's nothing off limits for us. I mean, we'll, we'll go wherever the, the crowd wants to go. Well, that sounds very exciting. Um, you talked about that um, album last year, Suddenly Drop. It was a big surprise to us. It was, it was basically you did a Beyonce on, on, on everyone. Uh, I think it's now known as. Um, when you and say, I don't get accused of that a lot, by the way. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, out of interest, you know, looking back on it, I mean, was it, was it, was it difficult to, to hide an album away? And, and, you know, people presumably knew you had it in the can and so on. I mean, was it, was it, did you feel afterwards it had been the best way to do it? Or was there any, was there any downside to it? Well, 
Maybe, but I mean, the thing for me is inspiration struck. Um, it, again, I, I said this earlier, and I meant it. Um, it was the most, I was the most surprised because um, I sat down and started writing a few songs, and I found myself four or five days in a row going, I started getting really insecure about it because normally my album making process is, you know, write a hundred songs, and out of that hundred, we'll figure out where the record is. But four or five days into the writing process, I found myself going, there's a record here. And uh, first day I wrote Mr. Misunderstood, second day I wrote you know, Record Year, third day I wrote Mr.'s Name Music, all these songs ended up on the record. And um, whatever happened creatively in that time was something I had never experienced. And the interesting thing was, um, we had just come off the Outsiders album and we didn't really need a record in the marketplace. You know, we just, we were gonna take some time off. But I thought it was a crime against that inspiration, the way it happened, to put it on a shelf. So we started thinking about how do we put this record out that just was magic and happened like that. So um, we decided to give it away to our fans, um, the old school way, snail mail with vinyl. And I didn't want my label to know. So we had to purchase a record pressing plant in Germany. <laughs> wow. And um, we pressed the vinyl and the CDs um, over there and shipped it back to the States. And the titles on the boxes, because we didn't want the distributors to know, was um, Christmas Record 2015, 16, whatever yeah. it was. And um, we didn't let anybody know it was us. And um, I think that the biggest thing for me and, the, and the, 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 the reason we did it, every time you put out an album, uh, the people that get it first are the label, media, radio critics the last people are the fans and I've always thought that's backwards I always thought that the fans should be the mouthpiece for the music so we decided to give our fans the record and let them tell everybody else about what it was well we we're very grateful for that yeah, yeah very good. <laughs> um, on the start of that opener mr. misunderstood um, a young man differs from his classmates by enjoying his dad's record collection. Um, and he listens to the vinyl of Elvis Costello, uh, Jeff Tweedy, and Ray Wiley Hubbard. You talked about the yeah. Americana heartbeat. Um, I'm guessing that young man is you. Well, it was, it was me um, when I was younger. I mean, I, I think that the, the one thing that, you know, I'm not saying at this point in time in my life that I'm trying to pretend I'm, I'm misunderstood. I think that <laughs> it's, 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 it's standing up for the people that uh, march to the beat of their own drummer. I think the interesting thing about this song is, you know, it, it took on its own life and, and became an anthem to people that are different. Yeah. You know, and, and I think, um, I don't know that I, that I, that I saw that when, when we did the song, but I'm very proud of the fact that there's a lot of people that have made that their anthem. And um, nothing wrong with being different. I was different, you know, and I, I think that's, that's what makes us unique. And um, the, um, the gentleman that ended up on the cover of the album is, is that, that kind of guy. I mean, I'm not on the album at all. You won't see my picture in it at all. But this, this gentleman was from New York. He's 14 years old. His name's McKinley James. And um, he listens to old vinyl and he works on his dad's classic cars. And we happened to meet him in this process. And I thought, that's the kid, you know, yeah. that's the Mr. Misunderstood kid. So, um, we put him on the cover of the album and he's now the most popular kid. <laughs> <laughs> um, you need to explain something when, 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 when a father-in-law or prospective father-in-law turns a, a 410 on you, is that, is that, a, is that a weapon? A what? A 410? A 410 four four is, yeah, a 410 is a gun. It's a gun. Yeah. We don't it's have a many, bad deal. We don't have many of them over here, so we just yeah, need a little bit. it's a bad deal. You don't, you don't want to look down the barrel of a 410. Well, you don't want to look down the barrel no. of a 410. A Did that deal. happen to you, Eric? Uh, it was a pistol. I, 410, <laughs> 410, 410, 410 rhyme better, but I've had the pistol. Thing, yeah. <laughs> there's nothing, there's nothing um, and I don't have daughters. I have two sons, but I can imagine that if I had daughters, there's nothing more intimidating than, you know, cleaning your gun as the new prospective suitor, you know, comes over to date your daughter. That's, it works. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's another song I want to mention very briefly because it's a lovely song we were playing it on the radio then, uh, recently Mixed Dreams About Feelings and You mm -hmm. and on it you duet with uh, I may pronounce her name wrongly Susan Tedeschi is that that's right? right. Yeah, that's right um, and I haven't heard Susan Tedeschi before so pardon my ignorance but tell me a little bit because she reminds me when I hear her voice of a, of a young Bonnie Raitt that's exactly where she's at she's, 
she's a, um, a you know blues singer is where she would be genre based. But uh, she's married to Derek Trucks, who is in my opinion the best guitar player on the planet. But my wife, uh, when I first met her, um, she started playing me Susan Tedeschi, and and late at night I'd never heard of Susan. And, and she would play me these records and one of the best voices I've heard. Uh, so when I wrote the song, I wrote the song by myself, The Mixed Drinks, um, I didn't write it as a duet. And it was actually my wife that said, hey, pretty good idea to maybe get Susan to do the second verse. And I, once she said it, I could hear it. You know, I heard it. And then, then I was going to be, it was going to destroy this, the song if Susan didn't sing on it. But we approached her about it and she sang on it. And you know, honestly, um, when you go into a studio, um, you're proud of a song, but there's certain things that elevate the song and make it. And Susan's vocal on that made the song. Without it, I probably wouldn't keep it on the record because it, it's that important to it. It's beautiful. I, I would suggest we listen to it now, except that I've got a funny feeling I didn't ask for a clip of that one. So um, <laughs> I've, I just added that question in re recently. So, but we will play it out in the radio. It's a lovely thing. Eric, let's go back. We haven't got much time. I want to talk, and I want to get some uh, questions that the audience have, have written. But, um, you know, that, you know, your calling card, that early single success, how about you? You know, in a sense was, you know, this is, this is who I am. Uh, was that your sort of mantra? Was that your sort of, you know, in a sense, was that a statement about, well, here I am, and take me or leave me? Right, and at the time, I mean, what you, what you forget is at the time, country music was a lot different than it is now. Yes. And that was a, that was a very, uh, that putting your flag down of this is who I am and where I'm from was not what was happening in the format, maybe like it has since then. Yeah. How would so, you have described country music at that point, do you think? At that point, it was yeah. very soccer mom friendly. I mean, there was a lot of um, it was female driven, believe it or not, at that time, and there weren't there weren't a lot of um, there weren't a lot of males involved, especially young males, and in the fan base, it was a more female driven, um, older fan base. And um, I think we when we came along, that song was a very male driven song. Let's and have a quick listen. Yeah, I wish I Me. How about you? It's Eric Church, folks. <laughs> so, thank you. So, at that time, that was unique, you know, for um, what was going on, I think. And, and I think that's part of the reason that, though it wasn't a major chart radio success for us, um, it was so different that it allowed us to grab a lane that we've been in the rest of the time. You know, yeah. we, we've stayed in that lane. You've grabbed that, you certainly have uh, commandeered that lane. Um, Love You The Most uh, is another semi-autobiographical song? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that um, that was one of the ones that, um, you know, in, in, in my career, that was, a, that was a rough time in our career because we got to a point where we had to have um, a radio hit, in my opinion, um, to continue to have a record deal. So that was my attempt to write what was being played, you know, on the radio, and um, it, 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 it's been interesting since then. I don't play it a whole lot anymore, but um, it's one of those songs that, it's got lines that are very much me. I, I do like Faulkner books and stuff that's weird like that, and, and I, like, <laughs> I do like mustard on my fries and, you know, odd stuff. But and I guess it, it looks back to, uh, that looks back to North Carolina as well. It which does, is, which yeah. Is, you know, let me read you, just, I mean, just in case people don't know, because I was going to say this, that North Carolina for me is such a great musical tradition, but I was just checking, here's, and here's my list of country artists that come from North Carolina. I'm wondering... How many of these were inspiration for you? Don Gibson, Randy Travis, Charlie Daniels, Stonewall Jackson, who I saw uh, not so long ago in Nashville. Don Schlitz, a great songwriter. Um, uh, and of course, Whiskey Town, then Ryan Adams and the kind of, you know, you know yeah. and the new old alternative. James Taylor, Tiff Merritt, who's a great friend of the show yeah, in North Carolina. Yeah, yeah. Um, were, were, these, were these names that, you know, you would have been aware of growing up? Very much so, but I mean, also you have you know Doc Watson, Doc Watson, and the, and the, old, the, the old bluegrass, and yeah. you know where where I grew up, um, 
I was in the foothills there uh, of the mountains, and um, it was very much bluegrass music. And uh, the most interesting thing I ever encountered is I would go to people's houses, and some of the best music I had ever heard was on the porch of that Beautiful. house. And I would, you would ask somebody, why are you here playing on the porch? And the people there, though they were virtuosos at their, at their instrument, they didn't think they should ever leave that, that porch because they weren't as good as their father or their grandfather. So they played music not for, for fame or money or what they played because they loved it. And, and I think that was instilled in me early on that that's what music should be. Um, we, we don't have much time, but we, we need to talk about um, a song in a moment, which was one of these songs that uh, I guess must have been a such a such a huge breakthrough uh, for you, because I remember hearing it on country radio, um, and it, it was so unusual because it was the name of a person, but it wasn't about that person. I think you kind of know the song we're talking about, but just in case we're in any doubt, let's have a little listen to Springsteen. When I think about you, I think about Great, isn't it? Um, I just love that line. Uh, funny how a melody sounds like a memory. That's the whole song to me. I mean, yeah. I, I've I've um I've had that happen. I had I had music change me uh, as a younger man, and, and when I heard um, a certain song, it, it was the reason that I that I picked up a guitar. And the most interesting thing about music is, no matter how old I get, when I hear that song. I'm 16 years old again, and, and I think that's what's so, so great about music is it, it captures a moment in time that never ages, never yeah. gets older. Um, I heard that he, he wrote you a lovely note on yeah. the back of his rather long set list. He did. <laughs> I think it was from Sweden or something, but um, I, I, I got a note from Bruce, and, um, and I'm, a, I mean, I'm a huge Springsteen fan, so it, it, was a, it was a big deal for me. Although the song wasn't about a Springsteen gig, No, was it? it wasn't. I mean, we, we, the, the song was about everybody's had that experience at an outdoor concert, or at any concert, where you knew when you were listening to that song, you would remember that forever, and you would remember the smell and the feel. That's what music is. And I think that Springsteen for us, as we were trying to capture that, I felt like more people had had that feeling at a Springsteen concert than maybe any other artist, you know. Yeah. So, and it rhymed really good. <laughs> <laughs> and there is, there is, a, I, and I can sort of deviate on Springsteen at any time in, in my life. But, but very briefly, there is a feeling amongst people in country music who do, who do love Springsteen because, in a sense, he does carry a lot of the torch that is country no, music. Sure. That's the song of working people and so Sure. On. I mean, in, in, this, in this day and time, mm. if Bruce came out, he would be a country artist. I mean, I think that that's the evolution. But the great thing I love about Bruce is you would never try to put him in a genre. And, and I've always said that about music is I hate the barriers of this is this or this is that. I think that um, what makes music music is you don't try to put it in a box. Just do you dig it? Do you not dig it? And um, at, least, at least with that song, um, I think I'm most proud that it captured an emotion and it froze that emotion. And no matter, um, no matter how old people get, hopefully when they hear that song, it'll, it'll still bring them back to a point yeah. in time. And of course, a July Saturday night in North Carolina is not the same as a July Saturday night in Scotland, I have to say. <laughs> it's hotter. Um, we, we don't want to take Eric, uh, keep him for too long. So I want to just get a couple of questions from the audience. Um, where's Gillian from Ayrshire? Yeah, she is. Gillian's hey, question is, if your music could be summed up by just one of your songs, which one would it be? I would probably say um, there's a song on our new album called Mistress Name Music. And um, it talks about what this is, what we do for a living, and chasing um, music. And, 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 and that, that happens, I think, um, it happens here and not here. And it wouldn't matter whether we'd had success or not had success. Um, and and the, the line of the song is, you know, um, when you're married to a dream with a mistress named Music. And I think it's the, probably the, the best one that sums up um, me and, and what, this, what this is. I'm looking at Jillian. She's looking happy. Yeah. Um, Jamie Richardson. Where's Jamie? Jamie's from Glasgow. 
Where's Jamie? He's running his... He's, he's over here. He's over here somewhere. He's behind okay. a pillar and I can't yeah. see him. Uh, he says, um, when first starting out, who inspired you musically? Who inspired you the most? Yeah, well, th there's a lot of people. I mean, I, I'm a guy that... that, that um, Singer-songwriters are the ones that really lit my fuse. I mean, uh, the um, Chris Christopherson has many times saved my life. <laughs> and um, I think he would be the one guy. He's my Johnny Cash. And, and yeah. Um, I think that if I had to pick one person, it would be him. But it's unfair to pick one because I've had music at so many times save me in a different way. That well, um, I think that um, for this, for the purpose of that question, I'll leave it at Chris. Fantastic. But there's a lot of people. We like that, I think. Um, Kaylee's from Airdrie. is the last question. Kaylee? Oh, she's down the front row. Fantastic. Okay. She says, if you could trade places with any other musician, alive or dead, in brackets, um, who would it be and why? Well, I certainly wouldn't trade places with a dead one. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, you know, honestly, I don't. I don't. I think that's the great thing about music is is you 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 tell your own story, you sing your own songs, and um, that's why they work. I think that I watch so many people that they go out on stage, and a lot of them are younger artists and. They, they go out on stage and they didn't write the song or they didn't live the song, but they try to sing the song and it didn't work. And I think for me, as, as long as um, it's something that I feel, that, that, I, that I wrote, that I experienced, that's the best way for me to convey that. So I think it, it would be an injustice to trade places with anyone because I think that's, um, that's what makes music music. It wouldn't, I just want to finish with one song, because I love this song so much, and I just want to hear it. Can we have a short clip of just Talladega? Talladega, always raised up, whiskey in gold glass. Now here's to turn it up, or slowing down, and cars that go real fast. Now we were laughing and living, drinking and wishing, and thinking as that chicken flag was waving. That was good, wasn't it? I, I never tire of listening to that and playing that on the show. Um, and, and partly, I just love the imagery. I love this idea of this couple who are down at this car race. And there's this, like those cars, my thoughts roll over and over. And yeah. I just thought, what a great line yeah. in a song. Yeah, and, it, and it's, it's, again, about capturing um, a moment in time that you yeah. never forget. I mean, there's a lot of that, uh, that nostalgic nature that um, is the, what I love about music. So that's it, certainly one that um, I've, I mean, I've, I've lived, I've done that. I've lived that song. It strikes, it strikes me, this is the final question, really, but that so much of your music and so much of these things, like the Springsteen thing and, and Talladega and others, is almost a longing to go home. Yeah. And there is that greatness. Do you feel that in, in a sense? And there is that kind of longing in, in, well, in the I music. think especially when you do this for a living. I mean, you, um, you're very rarely there. You know, you're always on the road and playing, which I wouldn't trade for anything. But I think that when it comes time to write songs and sing songs, that's a lot of where the muse is. That's a lot of where the inspiration is. So I think that's where that comes out, is, is you, you're, always, um, you're always longing for that. Well, well, we're grateful that you're on the road, and that not least you're coming to play uh, in this city, in, in Scotland tonight, and we are so looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. Uh, and thank you for spending the time. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Eric Church. Thank you.